All right, welcome everybody. Today's video finds me at a kind of an interesting place. Whenever I first landed in Taipei and I was walking through uh, immigration, I uh, spotted a sign on the wall that said there's a uh, drinking water museum. So it seemed like my kind of place, so here I am. I jumped on the, uh, the metro and walked about a kilometer or so, and uh, I got over here to the museum. So we're gonna go check it out. The uh, entrance fee to here was 50 of the uh, Taiwanese dollars. And uh, we're right next to the river. There's a park and stuff like that over here. And uh, I figured it's something to do on a rainy day, which as you can see from the skies above, it's uh, kind of been a dreary overcast day. So we're gonna look around here and enjoy this and let's see what we see. So right over on the other side of this little hedge is the water purification plant. Now this is an island, but believe it or not, they were running out of fresh drinking water. So there was a, like in the late 1800s, a Scottish engineer came over here and started designing this, uh, this facility. And it's right up ahead. There was uh, so many wells that were dug. There was like uh, over a thousand wells that were dug and it caused the water table here to drop. So people were running out of uh, fresh drinking water, which kind of is a kind of a big deal. You need some water. So this is the building. Now this is what I came over here to see. It looks nice. It's in a, uh, like a Renaissance style. So the building looks quite interesting. So it's got a, kind of a mix of the Renaissance style, the classic style. You can see the classic style with the, uh, like the arch, and then it has a dome up above. And there's a little bit of Baroque influence. You can see here with these columns and everything. And then it has supposedly some mix with some Japanese styling also. Yeah, the building is amazing. It's like, what in the world is a building like this doing in Taipei? <laughs> but it is quite nice. So in 1896, it was a Scottish engineer that uh, started coming up with a survey to plan to make the uh, drinking water. And in a 1905, there was quite a shortage. And in a 1907, the Japanese uh, government initiated the grounds to, uh, to build this. And they built this building and it was finished in uh, like uh, 1908, I believe. Yeah, this is quite cool. Yeah, so we'll look at it right down here. So this was dedicated as a historic monument in uh, 2002. And there's supposed to, the pump room and stuff is supposed to be renovated as well, as well as like the sand filtration and all of that. So let's go inside and look around in here. See the gardens, and there's more over there. This will probably be worth it just to come over to see the little park and stuff around here during the summer months. And then on the other side of this trees is the new water filtration system. Some people over here to, doing some wedding photos. They came into this old pump room. Check this out. This is quite cool. So there's no touching, no climbing around in there. And we'll see, this is a uh, clean water pump number one right here from 1940, 110 horsepower. And then uh, we'll look at some more here. This equipment here was installed in 1940. Now, some of the literature that is talking about the original equipment in 1908, they didn't know what model or anything like that it was but then they reinstalled a new piece in 1922 and uh, these here were installed in 1940 and then there's uh, some new other ones that were put in here in the 50s. So what they would do is they would draw water out of the uh, creek and they would pump it up and then it would go through some uh, sand filtration. They would use gravity to go down through the sand filtration and then uh, it would be clean so people could use it. 
So here's one from 1960. This one's a bigger motor, 300 horsepower, three phase. Got a valve here and a valve up here. Some of the hill switches and knobs. Oh, that's great. So these were uh, manufactured in Tokyo. Oh, this one here was manufactured in uh, Manchester, Connecticut. Same as this one. This one here was in uh, the Tokyo Kiki Isamakuko or something. I don't know. This right here is the uh, surge protector. So if they had a like a lightning strike or a surge in the electric, it would blow out to protect the motor. And this is the uh, number five, 220 horsepower, installed in 1922. This is pretty neat. So I wonder where they, uh, they greased it at, maybe right there. So this is uh, from Milwaukee, now it's Chammers. From the 1950s or so. Yeah, this is the inside of this building. It's kind of a half moon shaped. It has the old wooden uh, framed windows. And there's a rope, that's how you open it. You pull the rope down and then you tie it off. Yeah, this is awesome. It's cool that they keep something like this around instead of just destroying it. And there's a few people over here. I saw a couple people walking around outside. I mean, it's not very busy. This isn't kind of what most people would be interested in. Another pump from the 50s. And this, here's the surge protector on this one also. I'm sure the kids would like it. They could uh, come over here and pull on some levers and turn some wheels and all of that. So we got another Alice Chalmers motor here, 50 horsepower. So here's an example of the lead pipe that they used. So they used lead pipes until the 70s. Then they started using some PVC and then stainless steel. Now they use like a flexible stainless steel. And over here, these are the uh, transformers. So they transformed the electricity down from 2000 volts down to 220. And those are Kawataka, whatever that is. Got some spanner wrenches and some breakers. This is a spare motor. Just some of the odds and ends that they tossed over here. And a lead tube fabricator. So they would toss in the lead right there and they would actually uh, smelt it down. And the uh, tools. And some more of the smelter stuff. So this here was the uh, lead caulking hub joint. All right, that's a look around in here. Let's go outside and see what's out on the uh, on the grounds now. Best part of this definitely is the uh, the building. The building is is great. The equipment is pretty nice, but the building itself is the best part. And it's the south side of that little building. It's kind of interesting. They uh, took some of the old pipe and they made this little house out of it. And they have a Santa thing and some more pipes. It looks like there's a stage or something over there and some flowers with some hearts. Some more of the piping. Oh, it's starting to rain a little bit harder again. Let's walk up in here and look around a little bit. Over here they got a playground for the kids. Again they use some more of the piping and all of that. And they have a little nature trail. Yeah, that wind's blowing and it's raining. So we'll go up in here. It's about a 600 meter walk. We'll see if we can get rained on and uh, see anything out here interesting. 
Yeah, there was a sign down there that said, beware of snakes, bees, and dogs. And it goes up about 45 meters above sea level. And there's uh, three little hills here. And there's some signs and everything that tells you what the trees are and the plants in Chinese and in English. Like you can see right here, this is the paper mulberry. Yeah, this is really nice. I like these. Uh, they got uh, ferns and everything in the undergrowth. Up here we got a big water tank. Okay, so we can see the river from up here. This is the Zhendian River, which it eventually runs down into the Tamsui River. So there's actually part of the water intake right over here. That's a boost station right here that boosts the water and it brings it up over the hill. And then here's like the old water storage. Let's go up there. It looks like there's a set of stairs. Oh, it's closed up at the top. So what you see here, this is seven meters above the ground and it actually goes down into this mountain, 23 meters. And it holds 11,400 cubic meters of water. And I got it closed, so we can't go up there, which is too bad because it's supposed to give you a, a view of the skyline. Okay, so we'll go down here and check out one more thing. They have some of the pipe sculptures. These big old elephant ears. And ferns growing. Yeah, this area is really nice. Just over the hill, here's the river. Kind of a cool area. Just wish the weather was a little better. This wind, I don't know if you'll hear that on the microphone. The wind and the rain is not as much fun. So a nice view of the river here. Looks like they got some people farming some stuff over there on that little island. And there's a little biking trail and stuff that goes right along the riverbank. Yeah, there's a whole park that goes along here. I talked to a guy yesterday that said you can ride a bike. It takes you about an hour to go the length of the, uh, the bike path. He says it's uh, a great thing to do. So we got more of the pipe sculptures. Creative use of some of the pipes. And it gives something for the kids that come over here to, they can climb around on all these. One of the sculptures. And it just goes down over there. It looks like some uh, of the bone yard and a bathroom and stuff. All right, guys, I'm gonna finish the video up here. I'm not gonna uh, hike down that whole trail over the uh, other two little hills, not in this uh, weather with the rain and everything like that. It's a shame because this is a great area. I think uh, if you came here during the summertime or uh, the early spring or something like that, this place would be fantastic. The little building was cool to see and it's good on a rainy day like today, but the outdoors is just not, uh, not very nice. So anyway, uh, hopefully you liked the video. It was something a little different. I know this isn't everybody's cup of tea, but this is the kind of stuff I like doing just seeing stuff that's a little bit different. I saw the sign at the airport and it called me, so I had to get over here and uh, check this out. So hopefully you liked the video. If you did, make sure you uh, click like and leave me a comment. If this is something you're interested in or have any questions, ask me. And if, uh, if you've been here even, tell me in a comment. I'd like to know how many people have been here and uh, it would be interesting to know. And uh, give me a like, subscribe if you're new. Uh, this is what I do, I just show you things that I see and tell you a little bit about what I know. And if you like this, then uh, subscribe, stick around, and you'll uh, be notified when I post another video. And uh, definitely uh, leave me a comment, tell me about it, that all helps me. So from over here in Taipei at the Museum of Drinking Water, remember, life is a journey. Until next time, enjoy.